The Panzer III medium tank, officially known as the Panzerkampfwagen III, served as the German Fosse's main battle tank for the first two and a half years of World War II, prior to the arrival of the Panzer IV. It was designed to fight other armored fighting vehicles, and to support and complement the Panzer IV, which was originally developed for infantry support. The Panzer III was a medium tank project that had been planned since the early 1930s, and was supposed to make up the bulk of Germany's armored forces. However, German industry was still unable to create such a tank by 1933, and the Panzer I and II were designed to enhance industrial skills and processes, as well as train crews for future medium tanks. Heinz Guderian a prominent armored warfare writer and strategist, was the Panzer III's godfather, envisioning an ideal design for fighting with enemy tanks, as well as providing infantry support. However, due to the choice of a 50mm gun, his proposal was not entirely approved by the Ordnance Department. The Ordnance Department was satisfied with the 37mm POC 36, which was in plentiful supply. It was already the primary infantry support gun, making ammunition management and standardization simple. This short-sighted viewpoint turned out to be a huge mistake. Based on Guderian's criteria, the Army Weapons Department developed blueprints for the medium tank, and manufacturers such as Daimler-Benz, Mann, Krupp, and Rheinmetall began constructing prototypes. In August 1935, the Daimler-Benz chassis assembly was chosen, after extensive testing. The Panzer III's first variant, Model A, was unveiled in May 1937, and mass production began two years later. Following Guderian's meeting with Hitler, in 1939 to discuss his concerns, the 50mm gun upgrade was once again proposed to the Ordnance Department, with Hitler's backing. Nevertheless, they simply ignored the directives and postponed the upgrade until 1941, when the Model J was released. The Panzer III was one of the early tanks to use torsion bar suspensions. A three-man turret with an intercom system, was included in the Daimler-Benz prototype. Both were innovative features, with the latter being way ahead of its time. As a result, the commander was not distracted by another role in the tank, such as gunner or loader, and could focus solely on maintaining situational awareness and directing the tank. From the start, radio was also part of the equipment, and the platoon leader could contact the commander directly, which made cooperation with other panzers easier. This feature alone was ideal for Blitzkrieg-style combined arms tactics, and provided tactical advantage. The three-man turret was later used by Allied tank designs as well. Panzer III's typically weighed 23 tons, and had a power-to-weight ratio of 12 horsepower per ton. Its 12-cylinder, Maybach engine, produced 296 horsepower, and allowed it to reach a top speed of 25 miles per hour. Early Panzer III's had armor that was only 30 mm thick or less, while later versions, beginning with Model J, had armor that was nearly 50 mm thick all around. Panzer III's were widely employed in the Second World War, once they were commissioned. They took part in the invasion of Poland, the Battle of France, Operation Barbarossa, as well as the North African campaigns. They were the German Army's best medium tanks, during the Poland and French campaigns. The Panzer III was the most important German tank on the front line, 
at the time of the beginning of Operation Barbarossa, in the summer of 1941. The majority of the tanks available to the invading German forces at the time, used the 50mm L-42 cannon. The older T-26 light infantry tanks, and BT-class cruiser tanks, were the most numerous Soviet armor encountered by the Germans at the beginning of the invasion. This, combined with superior German tactical and strategic skills in armored clashes, adequate crew training, and the Panzer III's generally good ergonomics, contributed to a favorable kill-loss ratio of about 6 to 1 for German tanks of all types in 1941. The Panzer III's, on the other hand, were severely outperformed by the more advanced Soviet T-34 medium tanks, and KV series of heavy tanks, the latter of which the German forces encountered in larger numbers, as the invasion progressed. The Panzer III was upgunned with a longer, more powerful 50mm gun and received thicker armor, to address the rising need to resist heavier enemy tanks, but it was still at a disadvantage compared to Soviet tank designs. As a result, development of self-propelled anti-tank guns started, as did the upgunning of the Panzer IV. Panzer III tanks were the mainstay of German tank divisions from 1940 to 1942. The Panzer III effectively swapped roles with the Panzer IV, starting in 1942, when the final variant of the Panzer III was equipped with the 75mm KWK L24 which was better suited for infantry support. Because of its improved upgrade potential, the Panzer IV had become Germany's principal medium tank by 1942. The Panzer III remained in production, as a close support vehicle. Following the German military's losses and ultimate defeat at the Battle of Kursk, the Panzer III's were replaced by the more advanced Panzer IVs, and were tasked with minor role. Between 1938 and 1943, a total of 5,691 Panzer III tanks, of various versions were manufactured. In 1943, production of the Panzer III's came to an end. Nonetheless, until the conclusion of the war, the Panzer III's reliable and long-lasting chassis provided hulls for one of the most successful self-propelled guns of the Second World War, the Sturmgeschütz III assault gun. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.